All right, welcome back. Uh, so we're going on to mood disorders. Uh, mood disorders are mental disorders that have mood disturbances as their predominant feature and take two forms, depression and bipolar depression disorder. Um, people, which is, um, people go from one end of the emotional pole, extreme depression, to the other, extreme mania. So depression, also called unipolar depression. Um, so have you ever seen the movie What Dreams May Come? Uh, Robin, Willi Robin Williams' wife uh, suffers from depression. Uh, so we'll talk about depression first. Uh, major depressive disorder uh, refers to simply as depression is characterized by a severely depressed mood and or inability to experience pleasure that lasts two or more weeks and is accompanied by feelings of worthlessness, lethargy, and sleep and appetite disturbance. Okay, so as you can see, these are the criteria um, for the DSMs. Um, this is regarding persistence, how long it lasts, um, and severity is um, accompanied by these uh, feelings. Uh, a related condition is called dysthymia, um, which has the same cognitive and bodily problems as the present depression, um, but they are less severe but lasts longer, persisting for at least two years. Uh, when both types occur, the resulting condition is called double depression, defined as a moderately depressed mood that persists for at least two years and is punctuated by periods of major depression. So, um, I guess one example, um, kind of comical and um, not really representative is you can think of uh, Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. The Pooh. Uh, seasonal affective disorder is uh, when some people experience a recurrent depressive episodes in a seasonal pattern, um, generally in the fall winter, and remit in the spring due to reduced uh, levels of light um, over the colder seasons. 18% uh, of people in the U.S. Uh, meet criteria for depression at some point in their lives. Uh, major depressions last about 12 weeks on average, so about 3 months. 80% uh, of individuals who uh, will experience at least one recurrence of the disorder. Uh, compared with people who have a single episode, individuals with uh, recurrent depression have more severe symptoms, higher rates of depression in their families, more suicide attempts, and higher rates of divorce. Um, it's higher in women, 22%, than men, 14%. Uh, postpartum depression is a form of depression following childbirth uh, due to changing hormonal imbalances. Uh, a relatively large study of twins uh, found that the concordance rates, um, the rates in which two twins have it, of major depression were quite high with a rate of 59% for identical twins and 30% for fraternal twins. Uh, treatment drugs uh, such as Prozac and Zoloft increases the availability of serotonin in the brain. Um, if you remember, serotonin um, affects your mood. Um, so there are some genetic factors uh, regarding an allele. Um, so if you have a one short allele, um, you are more uh, likely to uh, experience a major depressive um, episode. And it's also um, as with the diathesis, diathesis stress model um, related to um, type of condition. Um, if you have no stressful conditions, um, higher um, maltreatment, which is uh, bad treatment conditions, uh, uh, like an abusive uh, household, and then severe maltreatment, uh, abusive household relationships, and likewise, um, you're more likely to uh, experience uh, depression if you have a short allele um, versus if you have two short alleles or two long alleles. So this is relating to individual differences in um, susceptibility to depression. So uh, explanations for depressions from a genetic, uh, some explanations are a genetic vulnerability as mentioned by those uh, allele and negative early life events as mentioned by the maltreatment. Um, 
these people will develop a negative schema. If you remember, schema is um, a collection of thoughts um, regarding how things work. Um, so they have biased interpretation of information. Um, they see the, the world negatively through gray um, colored lenses. Um, they have biased attention. They have trouble disengaging from negative information. And they have biased memory, which they have better recall of negative information. Um, so this makes it really hard to break the cycle of depression. Um, helplessness theory is a cognitive model of depression. It maintains that individuals who are prone to depression automatically attribute negative experiences to causes that are internal, their own fault, stable, unlikely to change, and global widespread. Um, so what would you be called if you attributed positive experiences in the same way? Um, probably an optimist. So medical treatment for um, depressions are called antidepressants. Uh, they, the first one is an MAOI, um, a medication that prevents the breakdown of uh, uh, monoamino oxidase, um, which breaks down neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine and serotonin and dopamine. Um, so epinephrine is a stimulant, norepinephrine calms you down, serotonin regulates your mood, and dopamine creates positive effects. So the side effects of this drug is that you can have dizziness, uh, loss of sexual interest, and it makes, it, uh, makes this drug often difficult to tolerate. Um, so some new ones are called tricyclic antidepressants. Um, these are the names, um, you might be familiar with them. Um, they block the reuptake of norepinephrine and serotonin but they can result in side effects of dry mouth, constipation, difficulty urinating, blurred vision, and a racing heart. Um, the last class is the newest class. Um, they are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs. Um, drugs such as Prozac, uh, more familiar, Celexa, and Pasil. Um, you probably heard of Prozac. So this is kind of the idea of how each of these work. Um, so MAOIs. Uh, prevent the breakdown of norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine. Uh, SSRI blocks the reuptake of serotonin, so if they can't go back into this, um, they continue to simulate the receptor site. Um, and tricyclic antidepressant blocks the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine. So um, being more selective is uh, sometimes better, um, but the general consensus is that um, different drugs will be tried with the individual if one does not work. So, percentage of people using antidepressants um, is increasing. Um, that you can see here. Um, back uh, a while ago, uh, back in the 80s and 90s, it's uh, 2%. And the current rate is uh, 4%. Uh, the total rate is around 9%. And females are increasingly using it at 13%. Um, this leads us back to the idea of Brave New World, um, which is uh, they generally medicate for every um, reason. Um, Self-medication in uh, this novel is common, if you have read it. So, continuing with antidepressants, there are two other types. Um, Effexor is an example of a serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, so SNRI acts on both serotonin and norepinephrine. Welbutrin, um, in contrast, is a norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake um, inhibitor. So two additional different types of uh, medications. Uh, most antidepressants can take up to a month before they start to have an effect on mood. Um, so the issue with uh, this is that if you're taking these medications and experiencing the side effects, um, you might not want to continue taking the medication despite it um, taking a while before it actually has a positive effect on you. Um, antidepressants can also treat eating disorders and anxiety um, disorders. Uh, lithium is sometimes used um, when uh, traditional antidepressants uh, don't work as well. But uh, Lithium, which we'll cover in a bit, is used more with uh, bipolar disorder. Um, electric Compulsive Therapy, ECT, 
um, sometimes referred to as shock therapy, um, delivers uh, a brief seizure by using electric shock. Um, generally used to treat severe depression that has not responded well to antidepressants, uh, medications, as well as um, psych treatment. Um, it, it also may be effective in treating bipolar disorder. Uh, the main side effect of ECT is impaired short-term memory. Um, and the movie The Jacket uh, is more about, um, I would say, LSD and uh, restraining and a dark space. Uh, so it would be more of a sensory deprivation nature. Um, but ECT is used to uh, use in the movie uh, to treat a certain uh, disorder. So if you watch the movie, you'll find out which disorder that was. Uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation is another treatment. Uh, involves placing a powerful magnet. Um, if you remembered, I showed you a video of uh, this in class uh, where the guy was asked to repeat something and uh, the magnet was turned on and he was un unable to repeat it. Uh, phototherapy is another type of therapy. Uh, repeated exposure to light, um, useful for seasonal affective disorder. So, um, we're moving on to bipolar disorder. Um, this is a movie about it. Um, it's the idea is that you have cycles of um, abnormally, persistently high mood mania, uh, which is um, generally a positive feeling, and then um, you have the fall, so you know, it's a rise and fall um, cycle. 2.5% of people have it. Uh, it's a recurrent condition, uh, approximately I think 90% of an afflicted person uh, will have several episodes over a lifetime. Treatment is difficult. Um, because patients avoid taking the medication during the main manic episodes and then relapse with depressive disorders. Bipolar disorder has one of the highest rates of heritability with concordance uh, rates of 40 to 70 percent for identical twins and 10 percent for fraternal twins. So there's a high genetic component. Um, other factors Um, such as expressed emotion, which is bad, um, which is the context, uh, how much hostility, crit criticism, and emotional over-involvement are used when speaking about a family with a uh, mental disorder, um, creates a higher probability of relapsing. Um, this is not true just with people with bipolar disorder. Um, expressed emotion is associated with high rates of relapse across a wide uh, range of mental disorders. Um, so, if you're suffering from a mental disorder, uh, you want to have a supportive environment, but if your environment is unsupportive, um, you're more likely to relapse into um, the disorder you're suffering from. So, um, bipolar medical treatment, uh, mood stabilizers, um, the idea is to suppress swings between mania and depression. Um, two compounds are lithium and uh, valproate, uh, lithium has been associated with possible long-term kidney and thyroid problems. Um, so people taking lithium must monitor their blood levels of lithium on a regular basis. Um, valproate, in contrast, does not require such careful blood monitoring. Um, it has its side effects, but it's a currently most commonly prescribed drug in the U.S. for bipolar disorder. Um, the idea is you have to take it all the time to suppress both um, types of moods. Um, but people who have bipolar disorder generally um, enjoy their mania mood. Um, they're in a state of, um, um, as you see in the video, um, they're just generally in a positive state and believe um, they can do anything um, during that state. So moving on to our next disorder, schizophrenia. Uh, it's the most common, um, our, our, our prototypical uh, fall to disorder um, when we think of uh, psych disorders. It involves a disruption of basic psychological processes, a distorted perception of reality, uh, altered or blunted emotion, and disturbances in thought, motivation, and behavior. So if you see someone kind of muttering to themselves or acting really crazy, they're most likely suffering from schizophrenia. Um, the movie A Beautiful Mind involves a main character who suffers um, from schizophrenia. So, uh, positive schizophrenia or positive symptoms of schizophrenia 
the idea is that the symptoms are present, um, whereas a normal person would not have them. So one uh, present uh, symptom is hallucinations. Um, they have false per perceptual experiences that have a compelling sense of being real, despite the absence of external stimulation. Um, they can include hearing, seeing, smelling, or having tactile sensation of things that are not there. Um, so a little spoiler on the movie A Beautiful Mind, uh, the main character essentially sees individuals who are not there. Um, my friend who was in rehab um, also uh, eventually developed uh, some form of drug-induced uh, schizophrenia. And I would ask him what kind of stuff he sees, and he would say that he would see people um, in places they shouldn't be so like he's not sure if someone's really there or not most of the time um, so I guess he could see them on the road and he has learned that um, most likely if they're in a place that they're not supposed to be they're probably fake um, or he's seen things uh, so so um, on the other hand there's also delusions um, which is false beliefs uh, often bizarre and grandiose that are maintained in spite of their irrationality so uh, just believing that you're Jesus Christ, Joan of Arc, Napoleon, or some other well-known person or grandeur, you feel that you're a very important and vital person. Um, others are famous, omnipotent, wealthy, or otherwise very powerful. Um, again, another spoiler in the movie is that um, the main character suffers from illusions of, of grandiose. He believes he's an important person um, breaking a Russian code. Um, also, schizophrenia is also present in certain drugs, especially hallucinogens. Um, um, psilocybin mushrooms, as we covered in the conscious chapter, has also been nicknamed Hell's Bells for its uh, contribution to the onset of schizophrenia. Positive symptoms continued. Um, so another positive symptom is disorganized speech, a severe disruption of verbal communication in which ideas uh, shift rapidly and incoherently among um, unrelated topics. Um, abnormal speech patterns, um, reflect difficulties in organizing thoughts and focusing attention. Um, again, to use my friend, um, during the later stages uh, after having not seen him for a while, I visited him and um, he had extreme paranoia, and he was saying things about his life that didn't really make any sense. Um, at the time, I didn't catch uh, that he was suffering from uh, perhaps disorganized speech and other symptoms of schizophrenia. But upon reflection, um, we, uh, our his general friend circle started to realize um, there was certainly um, something uh, wrong with him. Um, other issues are grossly disorganized behavior, um, so exhibiting behavior that's inappropriate for the situation or is ineffective in attaining goals, often with specific motor disturbances. So an individual might exhibit constant childlike silliness, uh, improper sexual behavior, and disheveled appearance, or loud shouting or swearing. Um, yeah, so schizophrenia is what we generally think of as crazy people when we see them in the streets, um, talking to themselves, swearing, um, yelling at the top of their lungs out of nowhere. But um, also, catatonic behavior is another presenting symptom, uh, considered positive. Um, it is uh, a marked decrease in all movement and an increase in muscular rigidity and overreactivity. Uh, individuals with uh, catatonia may actively resist uh, movement or become completely unresponsive and unaware of their surroundings in a ca catatonic stupor. Uh, this video shows um, this man when he suffers from schizophrenia and the individual is able to move them into um, any kind of odd positions. Um, this also occurs with certain um, drugs and scents. Um, so a lot of drugs cause um, schizophrenia-like symptoms. So, uh, moving on to negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Negative symptoms um, are deficits or disruptions to normal emotions and behaviors. Um, so, a lacking of normal behavior. They include uh, emotional and social withdrawal, apathy, poverty of speech, and other indicators of the absence uh, or insufficiency of normal behavior, motivation, and emotion. So, cognitive symptoms are deficits in cognitive abilities. 
um, specifically executive functioning, um, thinking, planning, attention, uh, and working memory. So um, they're harder to notice uh, because it's less bizarre um, and public than positive and negative symptoms. So if you are exhibiting negative symptoms of schizophrenia, it's harder to catch. Um, schizophrenia occurs in 1% of the population and is slightly more common in men than in women. The first episode typically occurs in late adolescence or early adulthood. 40% um, of all admissions to uh, state and mental hospitals are because of schizophrenia. That's the uh, second most frequent diagnosis. Dop um, the dopamine hypothesis is the idea that schizophrenia involves an excess of dopamine activity. Um, this explains why amphetamines, um, drugs, um, in which increase dopamine levels, uh, help exacerbate uh, symptoms of schizophrenia. Um, this video um, is regarding uh, Ellen Sachs and her. She suffers from schizophrenia and how she's um, able to function still um, despite her condition. So, schizophrenia has a um, pretty high heritability um, rate. So, between monozygotic twins, um, it's about a almost 50% and, and if you have parents who have schizophrenia you're very likely to also have schizophrenia. Um, some treatment to schizophrenia is antipsychotic drugs. Um, Antipsychotic medications are believed to block dopamine um, receptors in part of the brain, such as the mesolimbic area, uh, tegmentum, and various cortical structures. Some drugs are thorazine, um, halidar. The effectiveness of schizophrenia medications um, contributed to the dopamine hypothesis. Yeah, okay. Um, let me see something. Yeah, all right, exasperate. Okay. Um, so dopamine overactivity in the mesolimbic area of the brain is related to the more bizarre symptoms of schizophrenia, such as hallucinations and delusions. Um, which is common in a lot of um, drugs Negative symptoms of schizophrenia, such as emotional numbing and social withdrawal, may be related to dopamine underactivity in the mesocortical areas of the brain. Um, atypical antipsychotics is not a solution, works as, at least as well as older drugs for the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, and also work fairly well for the negative symptoms. So these newer atypical antipsychotics are uh, referred to as these names. Uh, so we're almost through. Uh, moving on to childhood disorders. Um, half of all disorders occur by age 14 and three quarters by age 24. Um, but there are certain disorders that occur in childhood. Um, they are um, autism spectrum disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which is very common, conduct disorder, uh, intellectual disability, formerly called mental retardation, learning disorders, uh, communication disorders, motor skills disorders, and many others. So the first is the autism spectrum disorder. Um, shows pers the person shows persistent communication deficits as well as restrictive and repetitive patterns of behavior, interests, or activities. It occurs um, in every 60 of 10,000 children. Boys have higher rates than girls as at a ratio of 4 to 1. Um, this video talks more about autism spectrum disorder. Um, it, why it occurs, um, one of the things to draw from it is that um, it occurs, uh, it's related to the older age of the male parent. 
and also um, it's not caused by uh, immunizations um, so vaccines do not cause ASD um, so uh, explanations for ASD um, it can be understood as an impaired capacity for emphasizing uh, knowing the mental states of others, so theory of mind, um, superior, combined with a superior ability for systematizing, understanding the rules that organize structure and function of objects. Um, so these individuals lack empathy, and so they aren't able to read the emotional states of others or understand the mental states of others. ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, um, you can be ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder. Uh, it's a persistent pattern of severe problems with inattention or hyperactivity or impulsiveness that cause significant impairments in functioning. Um, a child has, has these behaviors, has to have many of these behaviors for at least six months in at least two settings uh, to the point where they impair the child's ability to perform at school or get along at home. Um, 10% of boys and 4% of girls meet criteria for ADHD. Um, there are some concerns about um, the increasing um, prevalence rates, um, whether it is um, just people misdiagnosing, um, un unable to control their own children, or if um, we have more available facilities that are able to diagnose this disorder. 4% um, of adults meet criteria for ADHD and are more likely to be male, divorced, and unemployed. And most did not receive treatment for the ADHD. ADHD, ADHD. <coughs> Heritability of ADHD is 76%. Um, a lot of people with ADHD um, tend to still be able to go to college and succeed academically. Um, on a lot of medications, um, some of these medications, uh, as we mentioned in the consciousness chapter um, do facilitate um, attention and learning um, so they have been used to academically cheat in a sense um, to improve your ability to focus in people with non ADHD um, symptoms um, if you have ADHD um, they help you function as a normal person if you don't have ADHD they help you function better another childhood disorder is conduct disorder um, in which a child or adolescent engaged in a persistent pattern of deviant behavior involving aggression to people or animals, destruction of property, deceitfulness or death, or serious rule violations. Approximately 9% of people suffer from this disorder, and it's a lifetime uh, conduct disorder. So essentially the idea that uh, certain people are just bad apples, uh, have a dysfunctional uh, functional parameters for society. Um, conduct disorder diagnosed um, in children uh, tends to uh, also uh, show itself up as um, even worse disorders in adulthood. Um, they tend to be your criminals and your um, psychos, psycho killers. Um, so moving on to personality disorders. Uh, the reason uh, treatment isn't covered in some of these disorders is um, there wasn't really a direct statement in the treatment chapter regarding the, uh, treating these disorders so um, they just move on without uh, a specific treatment. Um, generally um, psychotherapy would be the first uh, step on treating these disorders. Uh, one quick 